Hey everyone, what's up? It's Kristen, and today I have a video for you on pointers and how you can use pointers in your C++ code to access the contents of variables or their locations within memory where they reside. So to help you visualize what's going on inside of your computer when we use pointers, I want you to imagine that in your computer's memory there are a series of houses strung along in a row along a single lane street. So this is like, a, think of like a, a subdivision uh, that has just one road and all of the houses are along it, n number of houses are along it linearly in a row. And at each one of these houses we might have different uh, variables, like a house could be a variable for an integer, it could be a house for a string or a double, and they would have different sizes according to how much memory was allocated to that data type. So for instance, a double would have a larger memory block than a float or an integer. Um, and at each one of these houses, a value right, of that data type can reside. So for instance, if I had an integer, uh, I could store a 5 within that house, and 5 will reside within that variable at that location. And each location is going to have like an address, or you can think of it as like a mailing address, like a mailbox, associated with the house on each one of those locations in your memory where the value could reside. So we can either point to the contents of the variable. So in, in this uh, example, we could point to the 5 inside of the variable, or we could print to the location of 5, wherever that variable is stored within the memory. So I'm going to walk through some code to show you what I'm talking about here. Say I have a, an integer called value, which stores 5 within it. So 5 resides within value somewhere in your memory in your computer. And if I want to access value, I need to have an integer type pointer. So I have to have a pointer of the same data type as the location in order to uh, access the contents. So I declare a integer pointer called star p1. Star p1, we're adding this star here in order to use p1 as a pointer. So this is the syntax to create a pointer is through the star attached to some variable name of some data type. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how this works by showing you the opposite of the star, which is also called the ampersand or the and sign. And when we do this, we're accessing the address instead of pointing at some contents. So the pointer points at something. It can point at the contents or it can point at the address. And what we want to do is we want to show how these two interact. They're basically two sides of a coin that can cancel each other out, the star and the and are used in similar fashions. So what I'm going to do here is I've got value and I have p1. Say I wanted to print the address of the pointer, well I can just do and p1. And and p1 is going to be wherever p1 resides in memory. And p1 could be nowhere near value and still be able to point to it because it is of that data type. So this is going to print where the location in memory where p1 resides. But if I set star p1 equal to the address, the and value of value, the, the variable, what I'm doing is saying that p1 now points to the memory location of the variable value. We're not pointing at the contents of value, so we're not pointing at the 5, but rather at value itself, wherever value resides. So that's like pointing to the mailing address of value. So if I print that out, p1 will contain the address of the variable value. So we could actually print through p1 where value resides in memory. And likewise, if I dereferenced the pointer, because pointer is currently pointing to the location, we can basically grab the contents at that location by starring PTR again, or P P1 again. P1 is set here to the address of value, so the star here attached to P1 when we print it is basically negating the and sign here, and instead of printing the address of value, we're printing the contents of value instead. 
Now, pointers can be chained together. You can have pointers that point to pointers, and you can also have levels of pointers. You can have a one-star pointer, a two-star pointer, a three-star pointer, as many stars as you want to. I would recommend keeping your pointers to one to two stars. It is a good coding practice to keep uh, your pointers as single or double pointers. A triple pointer is called three-star pointing, and that is something that I've been recommended to not use for years, so I would highly recommend you to stay away from it. It is shied away from an industry, and there's no need to unless you have a very good reason. So if I declare a double pointer in star star PTR, what I'm saying is that I'm creating a pointer, uh, a level two pointer, so to speak. So what I can do is I can use this to directly access something if I wanted to. So let's see, if I printed and PTR after declaring star star PTR, what I'm doing is I'm printing the address of PTR, wherever it resides, similar to what I do here when I say and P1. We declared star P1 and then use the ampersand to print its location, its address. And we can do the same thing here through the and PTR. It's like we've got this star star PTR and we can print and PTR and get its address. Similarly, if we take this star star PTR and then set it equal to the memory address of the first pointer, P1, now we have that PTR points to the memory address or location of the pointer P1, which is pointing at the memory address or location of value. So now we've chained PTR to point to P1 to point to value. So if we were to print PTR after assigning it to and P1, and P1, we'd be printing the address of P1 similar to what we're doing when we print it up here. So we have this star star PTR and when we print it what we're doing is we're going directly to the address of P1 using the double star pointer. And if we were to dereference P1 by printing star star PTR, what we would be doing is actually printing the contents of what P1 is pointing to. So P1 is pointing to the address of the variable value. So star PTR should point us to the address of value. And then if we star that, we should be getting the value associated with that address. So we go first to that location, wherever uh, we point to. So star PTR would basically go to and value, and then star star PTR, dereferencing, gives us the value of 5 from value through the memory address that P1 points to. So let's see how this works. Uh, just to keep, just a quick reminder while I'm compiling this, we have been working with pointers up to this point, and you might not have noticed it. When we pass by value versus pass by reference, especially with arrays, we're using a pointer to that array in memory. So imagine if you have an array in your main, and you pass it as a parameter to a function, and modify the contents of your array, and then finish the execution of that function and go back to your main, what you'll notice is that if you tried to print the contents of your array, you would see that it has been updated. Those, those changes that were made in a second scope and a different scope in your computer have reflected back onto the array itself. And we're not just um, passing it as a value, we're passing it as a reference. So we're referencing that location, that that place uh, in memory where the array resides and we're updating all the contents there rather than copying the information and using it locally within the um, scope of the function. So let's see what we get when we print this information out. So the first thing I print is and p1. And p1 is the address of star p1. So we have declared star p1 and the first thing we do is we use and p1 to print where it is located in memory. We can see that it ends with f08. Now if we set p1 equal to the address of value through the and value, what we do is we can print p1 
and print the value, the address of the variable value. So here you can see that we're printing uh, an address that ends in F0C, which is different than F08. So we've got two different addresses for the value variable and the pointer variable. Now if we go down and we dereference that P1, which is pointing to the address of value, we're going to negate or cancel these two symbols and actually point to the contents of value through dereferencing. So that's how we're getting the value of 5, is because we're, always, we're already pointing P1 to the location of value, the mailing address of value, and then star P1, after using that on the address of the variable, we're actually grabbing the contents. So the next thing I'm doing here is I'm actually printing the address of the double pointer. So star star PTR has been declared here, and then what I do is I print the actual address of that pointer, which you can see here has the memory address ending in F04, which is completely different than the other two. Now, if I set PTR equal to the address of P1, you can see that the address here that we're printing from printing PTR is ending in F08. So we're actually printing P1's address through PTR. And likewise, if I was to dereference the double pointer, star star PTR, remind yourself that PTR is pointing to the address of P1, and P1 is pointing to the address of value. So when we do star star PTR, we're actually accessing the contents in the variable value through P1 by saying star PTR will point to the address of value. And then if we add an additional star in front of that, then we're going to be pointing to the actual contents at that location. Another way of thinking about this is that PTR is equal to the address of P1. So there's an ampersand here. And then P1 is equal to the address of value. So there's another ampersand. So we now have two ampersands that we're kind of negating through the double star dereferencing. I hope this helps in understanding pointers and memory addresses, and I'll catch you next time. Thanks, guys. Bye.